Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In today's video, I'm gonna cover a couple of different gyro options that you can use with Express LRS. For quite a while, I've been waiting for an S-Bus capability on Express LRS, and the reason for that is because so many fixed-wing gyros utilize S-Bus. They take advantage of it. And one of the things I wanted to get across right away is the difference between S-Bus and PWM. And I think this picture kind of frames that up really well. In the left-hand side, we've got an Express LRS PWM receiver. So this is PWM output natively, and it's connected in the correct manner to a gyro via PWM. On the right-hand side, we've got an Express LRS receiver with an S-Bus converter board. And I'll go through this little configuration with links in the description, so don't worry about trying to capture it. I'll provide links so you know where to buy this stuff. And I'll show you how it fits together as well. But in this configuration, this is an Express LRS receiver with an S-Bus converter board, and this is how it connects to the gyro, just a single wire. Now, they both work. I'm not suggesting that S-Bus is better than PWM or PWM is better than S-Bus, and they both work with S-Bus. You can see right here, there's S-Bus on this label, and this one works with S-Bus, and they both work with PWM. But there are some nuances that are very important to understand due to the limitations within Express LRS and the gyros themselves. And that's the work that I've gone through to make sure we have the right configuration so you can get the setup that works best for you. I'm not trying to advocate for one over the other. I wanna be very clear about that. I'm simply showing you the way the options work out and why you might choose this scenario and why you might choose this one. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into it. I'll start out first by covering the PWM configuration, then we'll cover the S-Bus configuration. In the PWM configuration, the reason I used a PWM-based receiver is because this particular gyro, this is a Hobby Eagle A3L V2, and all of the other gyros from that lineup, except for this one, have one limitation that's very critical when it comes to using Express LRS or any receiver, you have aileron, elevator, rudder, mode, and gain inputs. Notice there's no throttle input. This is not designed to accept a throttle input, nor is it designed to provide throttle output. It only has out one, out two, out three. That means aileron, elevator, and rudder. That's it. That's all this outputs. So what that means is that you have to have a PWM pin that can output throttle on your receiver. In this arrangement, what you do is you connect your ESC to pin number three on your receiver, and your receiver manages throttle output just like any other PWM receiver. The problem, obviously, with SBUS, there are no PWM output pins to connect your ESC, and that's the reason with this gyro, you need a receiver that's capable of doing PWM on a pin because you have to control your throttle. Now, I suppose if you had a glider or some other craft with no motor, that really wouldn't be a problem. You could go with SBUS on that one. But in the case of a standard configuration for a craft with a motor, you really can't use this gyro with an S-Bus receiver because the S-Bus only receiver simply does not have PWM out for your throttle. Now there are workarounds regarding the mode switch. So notice I have a mode switch connected and I'm gonna talk just briefly about channel five. Express LRS expects to be able to use channel five or what they call aux one to tell the receiver it's armed, okay? So that, that's expected in the ELRS configuration. The cool thing is that when you use an integrated ELRS receiver, there's an output map option in the web UI. So you can reconfigure your radio to output pin mapping on the receiver. In my case, I told my receiver what comes out on pin five is mapped to channel six on my radio. So on this pin five output, it's actually controlled by channel six of my receiver. And by doing that, I'm allowed to send the arm signal to the receiver and I can still have control over mode. This particular gyro does not let you change the mode channel. It expects mode to come in on this pin. We'll talk about the importance of that in SBUS in just a minute. So bottom line, this is a working PWM configuration for a gyro. This is a very basic gyro. It only does wind rejection and what they call 3D lock mode. It doesn't even do attitude lock. So what that means is it'll it'll react to wind rejection and it'll hold a 3D state when you put it in a 3D state, but that's it. It doesn't do self-leveling or rescue mode or chicken switch or any of that other stuff that you might be interested in. It only does wind rejection in 3D mode. It's a very viable approach. 
What I like about it is that it's a $19 gyro and a $15 receiver. So for 35 bucks, you're up and running with a gyro that can help with wind rejection and do some 3D mode tricks if that's what you want. For me, this is a very nice setup because that's why I like gyros. I like them for wind rejection. All right, next up is the S-Bus configuration. And as you can see, much cleaner setup. All we've got is a single wire. So a single wire running all the channels from the receiver into the gyro. Now, the reason this gyro is so effective with an S-Bus configuration on Express LRS is that notice the output pins, they give you output one, output two, output three, four, and five. And what that means is they don't care what you put on these. You can put anything on these you want. You can put aileron one, aileron two, elevator one, elevator two, and throttle. But the thing that I want to point out is that there is a limitation of only five outputs. These are inputs up top. These are not outputs. You do not connect these to power. These are simply for input if you're using this in PWM mode. In PWM mode, you'd run your signal wires for A2, elevator 2, gain, and then aileron, elevator, and rudder up here on the top two sets of pins. On the bottom pins, these are for output. These go to servos or ESCs or landing gear or whatever. But the thing to pay attention to is you only get five. So what that means, let's just go through a couple of different use cases. You could do aileron one, you can do elevator, throttle, rudder, and aileron two, or this could be elevator two. Another option would be aileron one, elevator, throttle, aileron two, elevator two. So if you're okay not having your gyro command rudder movement, which is that's something to think about if you have a dual elevator and dual aileron setup, that's something to think about. You may probably don't need it to do rudder for you, but if you're interested in using one of those dual aileron, dual elevator setups, you can do it with output mapping in the software. And I will show you the software so you understand it. The other thing that makes the A3 Super 4 very effective for an Express LRS configuration on SBUS is that you have complete control over channel mapping. So I can go into the software on Hobby Eagle and assign any input channel from my radio to any output channel on the gyro. And that's what makes it work for Express LRS with SBUS because we can skip over channel five, which allows arming to the receiver, and we've got throttle output. That's key. That means we don't need a PWM pin for throttle output on our SBUS receiver. Before we get into the Hobby Eagle software, I'd like to show you how these SBUS receivers go together. And I've got a little example right here that I've been working on. This is probably going to be when I need SBUS. This will probably be my f initial configuration that I'll use out of the gate. All right, let me show you how these SBUS receivers go together. I'll do that by doing a deconstruction, so you see how the whole thing works. On the top, you'll notice I've got a row of 90 degree pins. That's for the SBUS output. So we're just going to connect a three pin connector right there on the SBUS output on that row of pins that are bent at 90 degrees. So you need some 90 degree pin headers. These are 2.54 millimeter DuPont pins. All right, you can find them on Amazon. Look for ones that are a single row at 90 degrees. Next up is the little SBUS adapter board. You can get these all over the place. They come in packs of two. They run $7. So you're adding $3.50 for SBUS. And the way this works is on the left-hand side, these pins are for the CRSF input, and these are for SBUS output. Next up is another set of pins that you'll need, and these are straight up 2.54 mil DuPont straight pins. So I have a set of four in there, and those go into the receiver. And then, of course, the Maytech R24D. This is right now my favorite Express LRS receiver because it's got the LNA boosters on the antenna, and it's really good in flight. The signal quality is spectacular, and I really enjoy this receiver. This is my favorite one right now for Express LRS. Okay, so that's how you put together an Express LRS S-Bus receiver. Now it's time to configure the Hobby Eagle A3 Super 4. When you buy your Hobby Eagle A3 Super 4, make sure you get the one that has the USB adapter so you can connect it to your computer and use the software to configure the gyro. So we'll take this end and plug it into the computer. And then we'll take the other end and plug it into the data port. And then the last thing you want to do is take a five volt lead and connect it to one of the output pins on the Hobby Eagle. I'm using a five volt power source, but you can use a BEC. That would be just fine. Just make sure you keep it to about five volts and then make sure the signal wire is up. I'm going to plug mine in on output number three, and you can see that that gets the power going to the receiver. And I should get a bind here on the radio in just a second. There we go. So now our receiver is bound. Our Hobby Eagle is connected to the computer and we're ready to do some configuration work.
I will put a link in the description on where you download the Hobby Eagle A3 configurator. I don't really see any value in running through the install process in a video. It's very simple. Just download it and click the installer and go. It's very simple to do. Once that adapter is connected to your USB port on your computer and you have the Hobby Eagle A3 configurator installed, you just see a connected option down here on the bottom left. You simply hit connect and there you go. The configurator reads the data in from the gyro and we're ready to configure. Now I'm not going to go through the entire setup for a Hobby Eagle. That's not why we're here today. We're here to do the S bus configuration. If you guys are interested in seeing a full on configuration example for Hobby Eagle A3, I'd be happy to do it. Just leave me a note in the comments and ask for it. And if there's enough interest, I'll put that video together. What we're going to focus on is the receiver tab. On the receiver tab, set your receiver type to serial digital receiver. There's a couple of different options. There's PPM and PWM. We're interested in serial digital receiver. And for the protocol, use Vitaba SBUS. One other thing I want to point out that's very important is in your Express LRS configuration, you launch the Lua script and make sure your packet rate is set to 100. I had mine set to 333 and I was getting some errors. It might just be an issue with the software. I might do some testing with it, but if you do see issues in the software and it's not working right for you, you might have to set it to 100 Hertz full. I've actually seen that on other S bus monitors where the monitor couldn't deal with that 333 Hertz rate, but the airplane and the gyro had no problem with it. So just keep that in mind. You might have to set it to 100 Hertz full in order to do your setup. All right, let's take a look at the radio configuration that makes this work. You're gonna set up your inputs pretty much the same way you always set them up. You're gonna do aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, just like you normally do. But in the mixer, here's a look at the mixer. And I'm also gonna put my YAML file on Discord. So if you wanna use my model configuration to get yourself up and running, I'm gonna put this in the ELRS channel on my Discord. So feel free to pop in there and download my YAML file and install it on your radio, and you'll be up and running right out of the gate. For my mixer, I have channel one, that is S-A-I-L. I call that sail or starboard aileron. And then channel two is starboard elevator. So if you have two elevators, the one on the starboard side. Channel three is throttle. Channel four is rudder. Next is channel five. And I've got that linked to SH. So SH is my throttle cut. When I move that switch, that's what tells my receiver that I'm armed. But pay attention on the left-hand side on the screen. Notice when I toggle that channel five, I'm toggling it back and forth. There's no movement on the serial monitor, right? That's the cool part about this. So the receiver sees that it's armed. It understands that it's armed, but I don't have channel five mapped to anything. Notice in this list, I've got channel one, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and three. There's no channel five. So this is what's important about the S bus configuration is you have to ignore channel five. That only goes to the receiver. The receiver gets it. The receiver sees that channel five came in, but that channel five is flat out ignored by the software. It doesn't see channel five, it's ignored. There's no mapping for it. On channel six, I've got my port aileron. That's why you see when I move my aileron stick, that second aileron moves, that's channel six. And then in channel seven, I've got my port elevator. That one's right here. Then that's why you see two elevator movements when I move the elevator stick. And then finally on channel eight, I've got my mode switch. So that's what lets me turn the gyro on and off. And I've got that assigned to my SC switch. And then the last one is gain for the gyro control. So I've got my gain assigned to S2. When I spin that, S2 goes back and forth. And so does my gain. I love that feature, very important. And then finally, I've got my throttle mapped to channel three on my radio, and that's set up on aux one. So as I move my throttle up, there's aux one, you can see it moving, there's my throttle. That's the real important part about this gyro is that the gyro sees the throttle on channel three and allows you to take that aux one and put it on a pin of your choosing on the gyro. Next up is output and servos. So here's where all the magic happens. We've defined all of our functions on the receiver page. Now we have a place to assign them on our output pin. So here you notice we've got out one, out two, out three, out four, and out five. Those correspond to out one through five on the gyro. So here's where we do our mapping. On out one, we can say, I want it to be aileron one or aileron two or elevator two or whatever, doesn't matter. So I'll say on out one, I want it to be aileron. And what that means is when I move my aileron stick, you can see that out one is gonna send a signal out to my aileron. That's also important because it tells the gyro when it's doing corrections, which channel the aileron is on. So if the gyro sees a perturbance on the roll axis, it knows it needs to adjust out one and out five because out one is identified as an aileron and out five is identified as an aileron right here. 
Okay, out two I have set for elevator. Out three, this is the important one. This is throttle. So I can run my throttle up and down. So that means that signal will go out on out three to an ESC. That's the super important part of the whole deal. That and your mode switch. Okay, out four is rudder. So when I move my rudder, that goes out on out four. And then finally out five is set up for aileron two. Now, here's, remember I mentioned earlier, if you can live without a rudder on your stabilizer, you could set this to be elevator two. And what that means is when you move the elevator, you have to write this configuration. But what that means is when you move the elevator now, both the elevators move. So you can put two elevators and two ailerons on here if you're willing to give up your rudder. Another thing I really like about these Hobby Eagle gyros is they've got colored LEDs to indicate what mode you're in. So right now I'm flashing purple. That is attitude mode. And I can also switch it to gyro mode. That's wind rejection. And I can turn it off and that's red. All right, that wraps up my video on how to configure Express LRS with SBUS to a gyro. This is a really cool setup, very simple, single wire, single wire going in from your receiver. You're gonna have multiple wires going out to your servos, but no technology can get rid of that, right? You've gotta feed those servos somewhere. Well, there it is. Express LRS now has every major protocol covered. You've got a single wire SBUS lead going out into a gyro that can feed channel three to your ESC and you don't have to worry about a PWM pin on your receiver. This gyro also lets you remap your channel so you can do aileron one, two, elevator one, two, and your mode switch is all taken care of without stepping on the arming function of Express LRS. Of course, we've had native CRSF output from the start, and we also have PWM configurations that we can use with the integrated PWM receivers or the PWM converter boards. So that's it. Express LRS just became a multi-platform receiver that you can use on just about any airframe I can come up with. The only standout I see at the moment is the helicopter platform with fly barless, unless your fly barless supports CRSF serial input. That's the only major holdout. And the reason for that is while the fly barless will understand the SBUS signal, you don't have telemetry going back out over SBUS. So just keep that in mind. If you have a working SBUS telemetry configuration like F-Port, that's where you have telemetry and SBUS over a single wire. You're not going to get that in this arrangement. That wraps up my video on how to configure Express LRS with SBUS to a gyro. I hope you liked the content. And if you did, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.